Hello, a couple of you have been having problems with the um, the new sort of components and injectors interface, specifically the, the comms based components. So I'm just going to show you a quick uh, demonstration of how they work. I'm going to go uh, file a new, uh, new project. Uh, device doesn't really matter, but at the moment um, I'm going to choose a A77A. So we're going to add a comms based component. We're going to use the RS232 for now. It's quite a popular component. You notice that the, the data scope window always appears in 6.0.7. Uh, we'll shortly be releasing 6.0.8, which fixes this. I know it's quite annoying. Um, if I, I just hide that for now. Then you can see in my console window, the RS232 component has added the UART and UART COM port tabs of the console. The UART is the actual uh, is the simulated data that passes through the component. The COM port is the data that's actually passed via the COM port interface here. So AC data source. If you've got COM port selected, then it gives you a list of COM ports on the PC that you can connect to. Uh, you can see that I don't actually have any COM port hardware plugged in at the moment. Uh, so it's not bringing anything up in that list. Now if I flick the data source to data injector, then the, the selector below changes to injector. And that allows me to add an injector that is assigned to this RS232 component. So in the search menu, uh, I've got, if I type in injector, then it brings up all the injectors. If I, if I take away the search, then it gives you absolutely all of the components even all the hidden components that are in the major categories. So I'll tap in injector again, and it brings up all the injectors. Now a very simple injector is the uh, human interface injector, which I'll drag on now. And this allows you to type in values similar to how you could type values into the transmit queue in uh, Flickr 5 and, and before. Sorry, the receive queue, not the transmit queue. Um, so with the with the human interface injector added onto the panel, I can select the RS232 component, and then under the injector drop down, it'll give me the injectors that are on the console. So I can I can select one from the list. So I've only got the I've only got the human interface injector on the panel, so that's all it's given me in the list. So I can select that. And then when I select it, it gives me a few options, which is buffer size and data mode. But we don't really have to worry too much about that for now. So I'll create my program as I would normally. So RS232 initialize, and then we'll have a loop. Inside that loop, we will try and receive a character with a timeout of, say, 10, 10 milliseconds. Uh, the return value we're going to store in a variable. So I'll just create an Rx variable. And then we need somewhere to display this. So if I say outputs LCD and drag that on, so I just need to initialize the LCD, LCD start, uh, and then if Rx is less than 255, i.e., we haven't had a timeout, then we're just going to print that character to the LCD. Um, adding the human interface injector has added another two tabs to our uh, console window. So there's human interface data and we've got a human interface receive queue. Um, so if I, if I run the simulation now and go to the receive queue tab and type in hello, stop the simulation, you can see that on the LCD it's received what I typed in. Now if you look, <coughs> sorry, if you look at the RS232 data tab, you can see the, the actual bytes as they've been received. And if you look at the uh, UI RS232 tab, you can see the, the data in sort of its raw format, just to display the ASCII. If I go back to the uh, <coughs> program, 
And when we receive a character, we also transmit the character, so send char R, rx. Save that. Oh, no, um, and then when I run it now, if I type in hello again, you can see hello has appeared on the LCD, but it's also been transmitted back out by the component. Uh, so you can kind of see that here and here. Um, say we wanted to display two tabs at once, you can right click and select new tab group. And this allows you to see multiple tabs at once in the same window. Uh, a quick going over some of the other uh, injectors that are available at the moment. There's a Comport injector which allows you to talk via a Comport on, on your PC. This is very similar to the RS-232 uh, data source Comport. In fact, it's the same, um, but it's it's for components that have the injector interface but don't have a specific Comport option. Uh, you've also got the uh, file injector. This allows you to read data from a file and also write data to a file. Um, so there's two files, incoming and outgoing. Um, which you can use uh, to provide fixed data for your application where you don't want to have to keep typing it in. The VNet injector allows uh, two um, instances of Flocker to talk to each other via the comms components or even across the network. Um, and this replaces the VNet uh, functionality in version 5. You've got GPS injector, which just injects basic GPS messages. You've got a DS1307 real-time clock, which mimics an I2C I device. Uh, you've got a CAN injector, which is used to try and decode uh, CAN identifiers. Uh, it's pretty simple at the moment, but it does quite a nice job. And you've got the AT injector, which basically takes, uh, it behaves like an AT modem, where if you send it, um, a command begin with the, with the letters AT uh, and then uh, send the carriage return character, then the component, the, the injector will automatically reply with your command uh, plus the characters OK as a, as a standard AT modem would. Uh, so that's it. Um, quick thing is uh, when you're typing data into the RX queue, it might seem to disappear immediately. As you can see, what I've typed hasn't appeared. So if I pause the simulation and then type, uh, say, OK, you can see that the characters have gone in. And then if I if I step through my program, they, they sort of disappear one at a time as they're pulled in by the component. So thank you very much and goodbye.